got to do this. <sighs> I've been lying to you. Not gonna, not gonna beat you around the bush. Um, for the last ten months, I've been lying about this enclosure behind me. Um, I had a lot of people doubt me when I first wanted to do it. Uh, I made progress photos that got shot down by people. People said, you can't do it that high. Your snake will get stressed out. Uh, even though you've got two basking spots, your snake will die because it will fall off a branch. Um, yeah, people told me that, you know, snakes have glass bones. Um, they will just fall because in the wild they have you know crash mats and and stuff like that so um in captivity we don't have the same crash mats so they'll, they'll just die if they fall if they fall off a branch um because they can't climb um they'll fall off a branch and die i think today marks marks 10 months of living this lie um this channel is a year old um i've just beaten a thousand followers so things are looking up so i can't keep living this lie anymore um so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to show you. I'm gonna have to show you. So obviously we're talking about the Royal Python vivarium that has been the uh, the the eye candy of the reptile shed now for for ten months. Um, it's been the big uh, it's been the big staple. Look at me at the end, I'm so cool. Um, but now, oh, I think it's time to expose the lie that uh, there was never one Royal Python in here. It was just a teddy bear. It was just a teddy snake all along. And it's been crushing all these plants. I could barely grow anything in these pots because of this silly old bear. <laughs> <sighs> Wait a minute. That's right guys, there was never one snake in this vivarium, there was always two, and I have been testing this thing out for 10 months now with absolutely zero problems. Now I'm not gonna go telling you that you should put two snakes in a four x two x two vivarium. Please don't think that I'm trying to do that. All I'm doing is breaking yet another myth about royal pythons in captivity um, and how if we give them the right space, the right environments, that we can keep them differently to how we've been doing them in the past. So uh, let's go and talk about these guys. Now the eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted that I've always had two names on the glass. So if you go back and look at the older videos, maybe not from when I was building this, but from any time I'm talking about the barn or the false water cobra, there's one and there's two in the background there. Uh, also, it's been really hard and quite a few times I've failed at actually uh, cutting two snakes out of the shop. Um, and most of the time as well, you'll notice that I refer to the Royal Python that's been in here as they. Um, I've also been referring to uh, my female that was always the one that went in, Priscilla. For a, for a short while, I started calling her a boy. So uh, yeah, I really have messed up uh, trying to keep this a full-blown top secret. Um, these guys are look. These guys are going for it now. Um, but I'm going to run over a few of the details about this vivarium just in case you've missed uh, what goes on um, in here in terms of heating, lighting, UV, sizes, everything like that. And then I'm going to talk about the experiences I've had with keeping two Royal Pythons in an enclosure like this uh, for 10 months now. So uh, let's get cracking. You two, you guys need to not be trying to break all my things. You're breaking my philodendron. Oh my god. 
Okay, maybe this is why we shouldn't be keeping two together, because they're a bloody nightmare. Right, in we go. In we go. Okay, so this vivarium, I started building it well before I started doing videos for YouTube. Um, and it was the first uh, big vivarium that I decided to try and do like a fake rock background on it and ledges and all that sort of stuff. So I actually built the framework for this vivarium well before um, I did the rest of the, uh, the vivarium. It sat in here for quite a while um, just as a framework because I always planned on having this um, in, the, in the far end and I knew I had to kind of incorporate it with the tortoise run uh, and just with the other vivariums that we've got to the right hand side so I had to know exactly sort of what sizes I was going for uh, before I even uh, thought about building the actual thing and finishing it um, so just to cover the sizes of this thing it's actually five foot um, across um, it's six foot tall um, so it sits about that far off the ground and then goes all the way to the uh, top of the ceiling actually it sits about that high from the top of the ceiling um, and uh, it's three foot deep on the left hand side and two foot deep on the right hand side so it's kind of like a, a wedge uh, with a three foot section and a two foot section um, and uh, yeah so I always planned on putting a Royal Python in here um, I always knew that my Royal Pythons uh, were fully capable of climbing um, before we even moved to Norfolk or had a shed I had them in three foot tall enclosures with uh, lots of basking areas at different heights um, and they were always sitting on on logs and stuff like that in the air so I fully knew that they were capable of climbing this was always been a test obviously I had their vivariums on sort of standby um, I always had a, a B plan um, and that was to obviously take them out of the enclosure if it wasn't right and also keep them separate if that didn't work as well so uh, yeah, it's not like I just threw them in there and went, you've got to get on now. So, uh, yeah. Um, and because I, I know that these aren't always in the trees in the wild, okay? These do use burrows underground. They do go in termite mounds. They do all the stuff that we tell people that they only do. Um, but because of that, I've actually got a lower heat spot, um, which is very similar to how you'd have a heat spot in a 4x2 vivarium. The snake doesn't have to climb that much to get to that area and, and bask and it's identical um, to the higher basking spot that I've got in the air so uh, they're both controlled off of the same plug the same wattage lamps everything's identical um, so it was an experiment even though they've been basking down there they do tend to bask on the higher levels and they definitely tend to sit off the ground a lot more than they sit on the ground so I keep uh, a hydrometer, a Wi-Fi enabled thermometer on the ground level as well so I know that the ground floor in here is the same as the ambient room temperature in the shed which can get quite warm and then yeah so I know that it's not too cold down there I'm not forcing them to come up because if I was forcing them to come up they would only be on the lower level which they very rarely are so uh, they've obviously must like being off the ground who knows um, so let's have a quick look at the other equipment that I've got inside the vivarium as well. Okay, so in here we have got a nice long LED strip, which is I'm using as my just daylight lighting, uh, kind of my full spectrum lighting. Um, and it's enough to keep sort of philodendrons, uh, what's this, what else we've got, the Aquatica, um, Epiprenum pinat, pinata, maybe pinatum, pinatum. Um, so it's enough to keep that stuff alive. Um, uh, and then we've also then got a 24 watt UVB, uh, which is the reptile systems UVB up there, uh, which we've tested to this rock here um, to give a nice sort of level there of UVB. Obviously, we're not going to get UVB right down to the ground. Um, that's just something that I can't really do anything about at the moment. Um, and then we have a ceramic heat emitter, which is hooked up to my thermostat. As you can see, it's 29 degrees in there. It's a really hot day. 
uh, in autumn. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's pretty warm. So I've had all the fans off, the windows shut, everything like that, and it's actually got really warm in here. So um, yeah, so the the lights, I've actually um, I test those regularly and adjust those on a. I have a little uh, dial uh, dimmer there which I adjust and then the actual thermostat itself controls the lighting uh, no it doesn't the thermostat controls the ceramic heater and then it switches the basking spots on and off um, and I have that set to longer than I have the UVB and the full spectrum lamp so I have a dawn and dusk in here with just the halogen lamps Okay, so this is the most active I've ever seen them. It was like opening the door has just like woken something up in them, uh, which is pretty mad. But um, yeah, so just a quick one about the snakes. Um, I haven't had anything negative happen inside this vivarium. So for the first couple of months, I actually had a camera watching these guys. I had it mounted on this shelf here looking in. Um, and I could watch them in the evenings um, and I could just see how they were reacting and hand on heart they completely ignored each other um, I wasn't expecting it I was expecting so we have a male and we have a female probably should have mentioned how to start um, we've got Hector and we've got Priscilla and I was expecting Hector to actually pester Priscilla um, um, and I was, I was, you know, fully expecting to maybe see them breed, uh, see them locked, um, or just come in one morning and find uh, she was sitting on some eggs or something um, after the first couple of months, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. They are completely separate. Um, they very rarely go near each other. Now, something, something changed today, um, and it was quite rare to sort of see both snakes basking on this area normally uh, one would be in this tube and one would be over there which makes it really easy in all my other videos to actually uh, show this vivarium because then I just sort of film that bit or film that bit um, but uh, yeah so um, they don't really ever bask together um, when I feed them I actually feed them inside the vivarium um, out of all the snakes that I've ever kept together um, and I've kept more colubrids together than pythons this is the first time I've kept obviously royal pythons together um, they do not pester each other they don't go for the food once one's eating the other one's eating they finish their meal and that's it if one is still going unlike a colubrid I, I noticed they, they'd be straight over there going like you know let's have a bit of that um, but these guys completely ignore each other. Once they've eaten their meal, they just find a place to bask, find a place to chill out, and uh, and that's it. It's it's been honestly the easiest um, easiest way of keeping these snakes that I've ever had. Um, yeah, so much easier than I ever expected. So uh, so yeah, um, here's to the future. Um, we're gonna. Uh, obviously keep a close eye on these guys i still do have a plan b if uh if it doesn't work out but i genuinely think giving the giving the different basking areas the multiple hide areas don't forget that there's so much room under all of this um log here we've got a cork around there that's that's um it's almost three foot long that cork around there We've got another bit of cork there, two foot long, um, basking spots up here. They can sit on this, they can sit on this. So there's so much space for them to do their own thing that they're just not pestering each other. I feel like as long as you do things right, you can break the mold, okay? Um, I'm not telling you to put two snakes in a small vivarium. I'm not telling you to do what I'm doing. Uh, this has all been a massive trial and error, and that's why I've actually left it 10 months before uh, before saying anything, um, because uh, I really wanted some, uh, some rock-solid evidence uh, and rock-solid amount of time um, to be able to say, yes, these guys are absolutely fine in this herbarium together. So there we go, guys. I've come clean. 
Uh, there's no more lies in the shed anymore. I didn't put her there, by the way. That this is what they do. Uh, we're done with this video, I believe. Um, if you've got any comments, um, any questions, let me know. Um, if you want, if you want a more detailed video on the actual enclosures, don't forget I've got free builds um, plus a, um, I believe I've got like a round, a roundup video covering the whole thing a couple of months in as well. So, uh, so yeah, there's there's four other videos about this vivarium plus um, upgrading plants, upgrading lighting. Uh, there's tons of stuff. So don't forget to have a little look through the back catalogue and uh, should answer most of your questions there. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing and enjoying this video. If you want to support the channel any further, please hit me up on Patreon where it costs you £3 a month and I can feature your name at the start of the video. And I will catch you guys in the next one.